use a simple fighter die and put down a single layer of lead foil and then coming back and building up the thorax with another layer just break off the excess and then just start just in line, just about in line with the point of the hook put down a couple of turns is all you really need all the way around now that's just a wee touch too much so what we're going to do is come in and trim it and come in and fold it around the hook now what I like to do is this point is just come round with the back of my nail taking any blemishes or lumps and bumps out and that's it now the first thing I'm going to do is put down a quick layer of thread all the way down just run it down and come back up this is just to catch in the the lead, like crisscrossing all the way down and back up. Your fly will last if you do that. Now the rib, the fly is a dark brown flexi floss or span flex. Now you want to catch this on the side, just in line with the point of the hook, and take it right round that point there. Stretch and take away the. Basically the small tail I left on here makes it much neater if you do that. And then for the underbody I'm just going to use some dyed yellow peacock hair, bleached and dyed. Now the fibres in this are quite long so I'm actually going to put this on first. Normally I would take up the flexi floss first and bring up the hell in between the turns with a, a wire rub to protect it because at times you get the hairs quite fine or small or it's not very long anyway now when it is long this is the best way to do it and especially in smaller flies it's been 16s and stuff now the hook I like to use is this is a grubber size I say size 14 size 16s now the grubber's the camisan it's just a, most people use them for tying midge patterns but you can use whatever hook you like uh, now for the, when I wind the herald on, I'm going to wind it up the opposite way, I'm going to wind the rib, and it's the opposite way I wind my thread on. This is the weakest fibre, and I've got to protect that, and the strongest way is to wind rib the normal way through it. Bring it all the way up. Now, it's really important that you don't touch these fine fibres just now. Just take away the excess. And then bring your rib up through. Now I like a few turns of the rib there. And you want them, you probably get maybe about eight turns in a fly this size. Just stretch nice and tight with the flexi floss all the way up to this point here. And then just lightly with your finger and thumb, just draw these back and then bring your thread round, catching in your floss. Just be careful what you're doing at this point. So what I'm going to do is take the thread to the eye. Tidying things up. And we catch in the pheasant tail fibre, which is going to basically form the thorax cover as well as the legs and the wing buds. And we'll give the impression. And we tie the pheasant tail fibres, the points, forward of the eye, just slightly, or the full length of the hook, or just slightly under. Just come around, catch it down so it's sitting on the top. And I'm just offering it to my side slightly, my side, and bringing them round. Look at the length. Now don't be shy with the length. And then take this down. Even if you're going to come over some of the material you've tied in, so that you're in line with the point of the hook. Now I'm going to turn it back two or three more turns and then I'm going to tie in my dubbin. Now the dubbin you're looking for, the stuff I like is I like adult seals fur and this is dyed brown adult seals fur. Now you can use normal seals fur or whatever dubbin you like to use. I just like the crisp of the adult seals fur. The adult seals fur is very crispy like and it certainly gives a great impression of the flyly opening out to hatch. Now I'm just going to put a reasonable layer of the dubbing down. 
No, you sit tight. There we are. Now this is a shape we've got. Now, what you want to do is split these fibres and even split. So yeah, give the impression to say the legs and the wing buds. So if there's ten fibres there, you put five either side. Just separate them with your finger. There we are. And then bring your pheasant tail, main part of your pheasant tail, over the back to form the thorax and split these fibres so they go down either side. Nice and tight. Two or three times. Now there you go. Now what I'm going to do then is take the thread down to the eye, full back, the pheasant tail and then just build up my head and heading up the way. And then keeping the thread nice and tight. Come on what finish. There we are. Trim away your thread. Trim away your pheasant tail. There we are. Now I, would, I like to encourage these fibres to sort of hug the side of the nymph. So I just slightly bring them down and then bring them thumb in and draw them towards the eye which folds them basically in at the area where I've actually tied them in. You see that? It just crunches them and puts them on the side. Very nymph-like. Swims nice in the water. Now you can finish at that and that's a great fly in itself the way it's sitting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some bug bond just to gloss up the the thorax. Now just this is a this is original bug bond. It's a UV resin that's set with a torch. Now the torch is this is the new one here. This this is a basically a single bulb with a single battery, double A battery and it sets rock hard. The new torch is by far better than any of the ones I've used and uh, again it doesn't take long to set cures the resin extremely quick and tack free, no oil residue or anything comes off it and there we are that there, nice and hard Nothing at all coming off it. Now, I'm just going to put a wee tiny bit of varnish onto the head. Now, don't be worried about the thorax being quite bulky looking. That's what you want. Because that gives the impression the fly is starting to burst or ready to open up. And you see it there. And once that's wet, it's, it's right on the shape that you're looking for. Now, that colour combination is by far one of the best colour combinations you can put together especially in any in any of the nymphs or caddis that I've been fishing keep the same if you want to change the colour change the herald go to a, a brown or an olive whatever colour you can buy you can buy these on the internet I've put them off eBay uh, there's a, someone in America doing a few uh, so you can get all the colours just Make sure that the larger feathers, you want the larger feathers. The small ones are fine though too, I mean you can still use them, I still use them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, that's a small caddis pupa pheasant tail. Uh, again, one of my favourite, and look I've got a wee pile here just to show you. you get, I get through these. Right. Yeah. All ready to go. Hopefully catch a few trout and grayling.